Hey you guys, what's up? Hope you're doing well. Hope you're having a beautiful day out here on a beautiful morning. And today we're gonna to be talking about two different things. One, we're gonna be talking about the purpose of wildlife photography camouflage. There's a little bit more to it than most people think. Most people think that really it's only used in scenarios with elusive birds that are you know, almost impossible to capture and you have to be perfectly hidden to find them. But that's actually not completely true. There is more uses for wildlife photography, camouflage, more practical everyday uses in most scenarios that you guys are probably in. So we're gonna be talking about that. And secondly, we're gonna go through my wildlife photography camo gear that I use for this year, 2021, and all the different scenarios that I use them in, the different outfits that I have. And we're gonna have links to all these in the description below. So if you guys are interested in purchasing any of these camo um, related gear for wildlife photography, you guys can use my affiliate links below. So diving into the reasons why people use wildlife photography camouflage in nature. First of all, it is for the reason sometimes of being able to hide perfectly, still perfectly undercover from a really rare, really maybe skittish species that you're going after. So in some scenarios, you do need wildlife photography camouflage to just help you blend in completely and completely stay out of eye of the species that you're going after. So there's scenarios like this in which wildlife photography camouflage is used. However, in a more common day-to-day -day basis, wildlife photography camouflage can be used to blend in. And what I mean by that is not blend in to the point of where the species that's after you doesn't notice you at all, but just to the point of where the species feels less intruded by your presence. Because overall, you have, you have kind of like a silhouette that the species is looking at. And when you make that silhouette very small, very um, natural in the environment that you're in, it's gonna be less threatened by your presence. And so in wildlife photography, even with more common species, even with species that are rare in your area but don't need you know, the full nine yards in terms of not being able to be seen at all, simply having camouflage on will often blend you into the trees environment around you or maybe the grass environment around you and it'll help you feel a little bit less intrusive as well as obviously making your silhouette small. So what I mean by silhouette is if you draw a line around your whole body and that's your outline and everything filled in there is black, how big that silhouette is, is how threatened the species is gonna be by you. And so if you can make that silhouette very small by getting into prone or even crouching in a lot of scenarios, that will help so much. And camouflage just kind of helps blend you into the environment around you and helps make that silhouette feel a little bit smaller. And so that's number one in terms of how wildlife photography camouflage is useful day-to-day -day uses. Number two is your movements get minimized when you're wearing wildlife photography camouflage. If you're able to blend into the scenario around you, as you move, the, the kind of maybe the leaves on your leafy ghillie suit, and I'll show that a little bit later in this video, but maybe the leaves will kind of naturally move as almost as if the wind's going through them as well. So as you make movements, it doesn't feel quite as abrupt as when you move your whole body um, according to the species that you're after. Especially things like even for example fingers. If I'm wearing my leafy gloves, it feels a lot more natural when my fingers are moving versus right now if you see them moving, they feel pretty twitchy. And so in those scenarios, it's really useful to be able to have camouflage to help minimize your movements, not scare off birds or other wildlife species so quickly. So I hope that helps you guys out in your wildlife photography and just understanding how camouflage works. Now we're gonna be diving into the camo gear that I actually use out in the field. So we're gonna be going three different sets, through three different sets of things that I, I use in different scenarios, and then also my accessories that I have beyond those. Um, so first of all is my standard set, and what I mean by that is just what I wear regardless of where I'm at. It just helps me just a little bit in every scenario. It's nothing crazy, but helps me out a little bit. And one is this shirt, so I always wear this camo shirt um, when I can, or very other similar green-like shirts. Um, but I also always wear these gloves for two reasons. One, these gloves are the most practical gloves that I've ever found for photography um, because they have fingerless on the, the real main function, I guess, gloves that you use to really turn all the knobs, snap all the shutters, touch the touch screen, stuff like that, but then cover up the rest so when it's nice and cold, helps out a little bit. And then they also have great grip on it and it keeps it from the sweat kind of deteriorating my grips, uh, excuse me, on my camera. So these gloves are awesome. I wear them in any scenario. I always try to wear a shirt like this. And in most scenarios as well, as long as it's not too hot, I'll be making sure to wear this camo balaclava as well. And um, this thing is a lifesaver in cold scenarios. Um, really helps keep me warm. And also it's just nice to be able to have, it helps camouflage a little bit if I need it. So in terms of camouflage, those are all the pieces of gear that I use on a standard set on any day that I go out. But when I need more detail, more camouflage-like things, 
then that's where it starts getting switched up. So we're gonna dive first into um, my my um, ghillie suit set, my heavy ghillie suit set. And so let's take this out right now. It's a very heavy duty, very much keeps me warm on very cold days. So it's also kind of always a perk on that sense. But this is the heaviest set that I have um, that I use. And I'm having trouble untangling right now. So I'm not gonna waste your guys' time and untangle it all. But basically I'll kind of show up an example here. You just throw it over your body and um, it's a very nice heavy ghillie suit that really helps you camouflage really well in a lot of scenarios. But it's my heavier one, so I never use this in the summer because it gets way too hot here. So this is only something I use exclusively in the winter time and in less muddy scenarios because it, it very much helps me blend in, but it's uh, a little bit heavier, like I said. So this is one that I use. Again, links will be below in the description. And then as well as it comes with pants, which I don't often use those pants, but sometimes I do. Usually I'll just wear um, something like this, but it also comes with this wrap that can kind of wrap around your lens, stuff like that, help out in that scenario. So this is a good piece as well. So now that this is put away, we're gonna look into my leafy camo set. So um, beyond um, my heavy duty ghillie suit, I also have a leafy camo suit that I use. And this is probably my, my new favorite edition that I've used for this year. I got it a couple months ago this year, and um, I've been using it a lot since then. And the reason why is because it's much more um, practical. It's not as uh, heavy, so it definitely helps in warmer weather. Um, it's not quite so um, intrusive on my body temperature, but um, also because it just is a little bit better, I think, of material to use in most scenarios because the ghillie suit attracts a lot of things that just stick to it and that can get really annoying really fast. And so this suit is a really great suit. It's uh, kind of got a leafy texture to it, so it really helps you blend in very well still in most scenarios. It comes with, again, um, a, a suit on the top, and it's got the hood on the top um, as well, so you could throw it over as a hood. And then as well as pants, so it comes with pants, and here's the pants right here. And so those are the two parts of that leafy ghillie suit set and what I typically use with that so in this scenario because the leafiness matches I also use this leafy mask so this mask will go over my face and um, really helps me blend in as well this is my favorite mask if I'm not wearing the balaclava I'm going to be wearing this type of thing because this um, really gets me blended in in terms of my face covering and stuff better than anything else I use so this is a great mask um, nice and light as well so again in warm weather it's not too it's not too bad. Um, and then the gloves. So finally, the gloves that I like to use are right here. And so these gloves are not as not quite as practical as the fingerless on um, these ones because I really like how these ones just give me freedom of mobility. These ones are covered on the fingers, as you can see, all five fingers, but they do have touch on them. So you can use them that way, but it's just still a little bit more clunky. You know that feeling probably. But I do like them because if I need to be really camouflaged in, they have all the leafy texture as well. And so they're really useful in those scenarios. These are very high quality, high, well-built gloves as well. So I've been very happy with my experience of them so far. Now to dive into a few of the other things that I don't have necessarily in a set, but I use occasionally is one, if I need to use gloves in a very warm scenario, I have these gloves right here. These are great gloves. Um, what they do is they have kind of like a magnet attachment back here and then if you need to throw them over your fingers and you just throw them over So why I like these gloves is because they're fingerless and practical But if you're in a really cold scenario, you can always throw them over it now They become kind of like a mitten and so they're really good um, gloves for very cold weather got really nice padding here and everything so really highly recommend those as well another thing that I use quite often is um, this camo scarf here. I use this with almost about all of my sets to cover up my lens and things like that. So this is a camo scarf, um, nice and cheap. This is one of the cheapest pieces of equipment you can buy that gives you a lot of ground to cover in wildlife photography. You can throw it over yourself, over the lens, and it helps camouflage you a little bit as well. So really like this camo scarf, like using it in a lot of scenarios. Um, it really helps provide a lot of cover for my lens. And then as well as I don't have it with me today, but I have a camo poncho that sometimes I'll use to throw over my whole tripod set. And so um, that kind of helps me in those types of scenarios. Um, lastly, I carry most everything in this camo, little tiny camo sack bag that um, I just kind of throw over my shoulder. It's like a sling sack, throw it over my shoulder. My camera's backpack is on my back. And so this is off to the side, not in the way 
carries pretty much everything I need to in there, as well as just a few extra compartments in my bag for the ones that are the standard set that I use. So that's kind of what my setup looks like. So now based on what you've seen, what would I recommend uh, you getting if you had to start from first to last? Um, I'd recommend definitely getting at the very least these camo gloves. These are the most practical thing I use on a day-to-day -day basis that help me in practical ways along with the camouflage aspect of it. Again, the grip and just help them keep my hands a little bit extra warm in most scenarios when you're out really early in the morning, whatever it may be. So this is definitely hands down the first buy I would make $10. Can't go wrong with it. Second buy would definitely be my camo scarf as well because that's usable in all scenarios. Doesn't add any body temperature to you and helps you cover up your lens or just from the front if you need that extra coverage. So those are definitely the number two, number one, number two things that I would recommend buying. Beyond that, if you're looking for a set to get, depending on your scenario, if you're willing to put up with the dirtiness and if you're in a colder environment, the heavy ghillie suit is definitely the thing that you wanna go with. However, like I said, the suit does get messy pretty quick. And so you kind of have to be okay with the uh, act of washing it a lot or maybe uh, just dealing with the dirt or dealing with the things that are gonna be sticking to you. But if you don't wanna deal with that, the leafy camouflage suit is definitely a great second option. And if you're in a warmer environment, I would hands down get this one over the other one. Again, I'll have all those links. They're my affiliate links in the description below. Hope this video helped you guys out, helped you guys uh, learn a little bit about camouflage and hopefully helps recommend you some good things to get. Thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe below if you haven't already to learn more things about wildlife photography. If you guys wanna check out my wildlife photography mentorship program that I'm now offering, that way I can work with you guys a little bit on all this stuff, how to strategize and capture wildlife species, make sure to check out my website link in the description below. And I can't wait to see you guys in the next video.